tortellini, tortelloni, different types of pasta, pas- tortellini and broth. Hold on. Ragu sauce. What is tortelloni? Tortelloni is just a bigger version of tortellini. Really? You didn't see, you didn't notice that when we were in Bologna? <laughs> I'll be honest, I did not. Okay. I noticed that there were different sized tortellini. Yeah, they're not all, they're, the little ones are called tortellini. The bigger ones are tortelloni. No way. Hello and welcome to the Worldwide Honeymoon Travel Podcast, the podcast that talks about all things couples travel, including destinations, tips, advice, and more. I'm Chris. I'm Kat. And this is episode number 177. My voice is back. It is. Tested negative for COVID today. Now, this is a whole like three week long saga for you guys because we record them, well, because they come out weekly, but... I'm sure um, they're on the edge of their seats. Oh, no. I, I, I'm I, sure it's fine. Um, anyway, uh, yeah, like we... Yeah, it's been less than a week since we recorded the other two episodes. So that's what's happening. It's day eight for me of COVID and finally tested negative. Yay. I feel totally fine. My voice is starting to come back. Yay. You also have some big news. What's that? Despite giving me a heaping pile of crap for buying what is quite possibly the coolest safari hat in existence. Okay. Would you like to uh, share what you ordered today? It's not that big of a deal at all. I bought a hat for safari. Not a hat. Because for the Gorilla Trek, they highly recommended it for sun protection, but also to keep the bugs off of you. The same hat. The one that you were giving the me the the one yeah. that you were giving me crap about, and now w- you are going to be a proud owner. It's flat brimmed. It is not like it is like a safari hat. It is not like a cowgirl hat or anything like that. <laughs> That's where I draw the line. I'm not trying to take that to Nashville. <laughs> You're not trying to be a buckle bunny. Oh my gosh! Stop it. The buckle bunnies were a huge problem oh. on that show. Oh stop! They were okay. Were they not? He's referring to Yellowstone, which is a show Christopher got really into, and he immediately referenced when he put on his hat. I mean, when you when you see something that, due to your both past and present, as well as your future, that you can really relate to at your core, it reminded me of my childhood. Oh my gosh, no it did not. You grew up in the suburbs of Cleveland. It reminded me of my childhood. Oh, my goodness. Do you know that I had two cowboy hats as a child? I'm sure you did. How many did you have? Uh, zero. Oh, dozens. <laughs> zero. Because even though I lived in the country and lived on a mini farm. You had no cowboy hats as a no. child. No. Really? No, because we weren't. We, I don't think we could wear them at the fair. What did you show pigs with? Uh, I wore boots and like boot cut jeans and usually some sort of like. Cowboy boots? Plaid button down or something. Cowboy boots? Um, no, no, I mean, they were like functional work boots. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. You know, we're not trying to look stylish in the ring. And you didn't, uh, you didn't when wear I used cowboy to, guys, hat? Fun fact, um, I used to do 4-H, um, which is like a, I don't know. How did you describe 4-H? I had literally never heard of it before we met. Really? Yeah. Okay, I don't know. It's kind of like a, like a... What does it stand farming? for? Farming, I can't remember. It's... it's Heart? It's like... Hands? Hand, hands head health maybe i can't remember but it's essentially like a bunch of different like club is, is, it's like is, a big club but then you can join different little things in that club is hen one of the ages no but like you could show animals through them and we would raise pigs and show them at the fair when i was a kid and yeah so i had like an outfit for it because we raised pigs so i actually lived on like a farm that did things Catherine. <laughs> Well, growing up as a child versus Christopher grew up in the suburbs of Cleveland let me, next to a cul-de-sac, I might add. So me, just picture that living. You had a bit, you had a tiny creek in your backyard if you went back further enough, far enough. Yeah. Let me, let me clue you into something here. One of the cowboy hats that I had as a child was from Texas. Okay. okay. Um, it had a little picture of a cow on the front of it. So there you are. Um, the second you guys lived in San Antonio. You didn't live like in the country in Texas when you were there. You were also a toddler. The second 
cowboy hat that I owned, I believe I got at a birthday at a Longhorn Steakhouse. Oh my god! If I am remembering this correctly, um, yeah. Oh goodness! I'm gonna have to break those out. Oh my god! Add them to my collection. Yikes! Yikes is all I can say. No, I've just never been a hat person. So ordering a hat for the first time is a big deal. That's my first hat I think I've ever, except for as like a small child when mom used to dress my sister and I, who are two and a half years apart in age, I might add, completely alike for every single holiday. Um, my sister would always hate it. I actually kind of liked it because I loved my, like, I was like always looked up to my sister and I'm the little sister. So I'm like, yay, I look like my big sister. And then my big sister would be like, are you kidding me? I look like a three-year-old. And we would always like somehow have hats and gloves that went along with like our Easter outfits or Christmas outfits. That's very stylish. But we were always dressed completely the same. You got to do what you got to do. Yes. Um, Do you have a highlight from this past week? I would say testing negative for COVID was a big one. Um, I'm feeling better. But also we got a lot of our safari clothes Um. Yeah, I was like looking up a bunch of safari clothes inspiration and sometimes there's like super expensive stuff out there. And I found this amazing um, kind of like short jumpsuit on on uh, Banana Republic. And usually it was like a lot more expensive and I got it for like half off and I was really excited about it. And I'm really pumped to wear it on the trip. Obviously not gorilla trekking. I had to buy more functional things for gorilla trekking. Uh, the fashionable is more for like the hot air balloon safari or like the riding in a safari vehicle um, isn't terribly taxing. So you just want to wear neutrals but you can like look cute while you while you do that versus like trekking you actually need to like wear appropriate gear for that (laughs) i am incredibly pumped for this Mm -hmm. um my highlight is also trip prep it's just always fun like being a month out from a trip Mm -hmm. you know um and like going through the itinerary like two or three times a week and like making the packing list and all of that kind of stuff and like really really starting to get into like the trip mode. Yeah. And we've even changed our itinerary not to get all into this and stuff, but um, just really quick because of the craziness of Europe this summer and London Heathrow's airport saying stop selling flights. We were originally going to spend a couple days in London on the way down to Antebe and going to Uganda and Kenya. And we ended up canceling that part of our trip because we were like, look, the main part is to go to Uganda and Kenya, not London. And I would hate for us to get stuck in London or, Flights get canceled, something like that. So we ended up just completely diverting away from London. And now we're landing a day earlier in Uganda because we were like, let's just build an extra buffer day, land. That way, if anything happens, it's okay. Like like for Italy, where if they change our flight and we're like, oh, we'll go the next day, it won't be the end of the world. We just fly out the next day. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, though, we had already gotten our Uganda visas like our approval letter and I was like oh crap does that mean we need to reapply so that's all questions I'm trying to figure out now (laughs) TBD hopefully not yeah (laughs) but anyway Um, other than that yeah let's dive into the episode let's let's talk about our earlier summer travels yes so earlier this summer we went to Italy and as a part of that trip we spent two days in Bologna and Modena so These two cities are in northern Italy. Um, Bologna and Modena are often combined. Um, You can stay in one and take, what, like a 20 or 30 minute train to the other. Yeah, it's really fast. Yes. So depending on where you're staying, the other one is often viewed as like a day trip. Yeah. Um, Both destinations are known for absolutely incredible food. So if you're going over to Italy to eat and drink, we recommend that you spend some time in Bologna and Modena, and we are going to talk all about these two locations in today's episode. Yeah. So refresh my memory. You had not been to either of these places. No. Okay. No. Um, What were your thoughts prior to arriving in Bologna and then prior to arriving in Modena? All right. So... I actually chose this portion of the trip because um, at the beginning, we sometimes will take turns on whose turn it is to pick a trip and stuff. And Christopher picked Italy. Um, I remember you were heavily deciding between Spain and Italy. You ended up landing on Italy. 
more specifically to go to Piedmont and try Nebbiolo and stuff like that, which we talked about in the last week's um, or two weeks ago episode um, about Piedmont. But the second part of the trip, I wanted to eat in Italy, um, obviously. Italy is a foodie country, but uh, the famed region of Emilia Romagna, um, specifically the Bologna area, is really well known for its food and its cuisine. Um, This region is where you get balsamic vinegar, where you get Parmesan, mortadella, tortellini, tortelloni, different types of pasta, pasta, tortellini and broth. Hold on. Ragu sauce. What is tortelloni? Tortelloni is just a bigger version of tortellini. Really? You didn't see, you didn't notice that when we were in Bologna? (laughs) I'll be honest, I did not. Okay. I noticed that there were different sized tortellini. Yeah, they're not all, they're, the little ones are called tortellini. The bigger ones are tortelloni. No way. Yeah. I am a moron. Well. How did I not notice this? You said it. (laughs) No, I'm just kidding. (laughs) But um, it's also known for, if you have probably heard it before, but pasta bolognese or bolognese sauce um, is from Bologna. So whole area very very well known for food um also the fun i love this wine lambrusco it is such a fun refreshing summery wine it is a red wine with a bit of like i don't know is it naturally aged or is it effervescence effervescence well it's sparkling um i don't know if they add what is it that you add to gas gas Well, I was going to be like, carbon, whatever. And I just don't remember the gas. You were a chemistry major. You should know. (laughs) Oh, CO2. CO2. There we go. I was going to say, it's carbon dioxide. There you go. (laughs) Um, I'm not sure how it's made, but it's really fun. It's like a red wine that's sparkly and it's served chilled and it's just very delicious. Um, That all comes from Bologna or in the Amalia Romagna region of Italy. So... In our short visit to Italy, I figured let's spend a couple of days in Bologna and take a day trip to Modena. So my first kind of thoughts prior was this whole reasoning of why I wanted to visit. Bologna is the largest city in the region. It's known for Bolognese and all these other delightful things. It has these big towers. It's very beautiful. It's known for its porticos. It's these covered walkways all over the place. And I was just excited to to kind of go to a, a little bit of a less touristy town. Not that it doesn't see tourists because it is a larger city, but a little less touristy than like your Rome, your Florence, stuff like that. Enjoy the food, etc. cetera. Um, and then Modena, really my biggest thoughts, I hadn't even looked at pictures before we went. I just knew that's where the birthplace of balsamic vinegar is and where it's made. So I wanted to go and do a balsamic vinegar tasting and acquire the famed traditional balsamic vinegar it, where it's from in Modena. After seeing it on so many bottles of balsamic I've bought in my life, um, none of which were the real thing. And it's really hard to find the real thing. So, well, I mean, they make they make balsamic in Modena that isn't the traditional kind that you can get in the grocery stores anywhere. But the real traditional kind is a little bit harder to find. It's more expensive. Um, but I really, really wanted to taste that for myself. That had been like a bucket list thing of mine for years. So that was kind of my thoughts prior. It was like, you know what? I'm going to taste balsamic. It's going to be great. What about you? What a weirdo. <laughs> We all have dreams. <laughs> we all have dreams. Um, my thoughts prior to arriving in Bologna was that it was definitely going to be busier than Alba was. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a it's a bigger city. Yeah. And Alba felt more like a town versus a city. Yes. Yeah. And um, Bologna is a university city. Mm-hmm. So I was expecting a lot of university aged people. Mm-hmm. Um, I was also thinking about the porticos before we arrived and by golly they were there everywhere everywhere which is great because it was also like 90 something degrees fahrenheit and really hot and it was nice to have some shade as you're walking that's very true um with respect to modena my thoughts prior to arrival were that it was going to be smaller and lots of balsamic offerings (laughs) and that's really it i'm a simple man yeah, and don't forget that this region is also known for cars, um, Italian cars, especially fast cars, racing cars, etc. And we will talk about that. 
Okay. Yes. Yes. Um, what about your first impressions? You you hop off the train in Bologna and what do you see? Well, really outside of the train station isn't terribly exciting. Um, I noticed the porticos right away though. Um, and we had to walk about... Outside of the train station was my favorite part. No, it wasn't. Of the whole city. Oh, no, it wasn't. Um, it's a big square and then you just... We had to walk like 20 minutes to get to like the older part of the town because Bologna is quite a large city. Not ginormous by any means, but it was a larger city. Um or at least it felt that way. Um, but once you get to more of the older part of the city, um, it's much more relaxed and it's very beautiful and charming. Um, definitely filled with students, which did surprise me at first because we were there in late May, early June. And I know back here in the U.S., most universities are done with school at that point unless you stick around and take a few summer classes. So usually it's pretty sparse around campus. I didn't know this and I had asked... Um, people that live in Bologna, oh, why are there students everywhere still? Are there that many people taking summer classes? And they actually said that most students are there year round. Usually they get the month of August off. Um, so we definitely saw a lot of students uh, all over the town because we stayed really close to the university. Um, yeah, I mean, the old city is gorgeous. The porticos are definitely there. Um, they vary in uh, beauty. You know, some are more like older and b- more charming and, and et cetera. Um, very, very beautiful. The towers are very cool. Um, and then Modena, super adorable town. It's much smaller. Uh, there's just this big main square with the Duomo in the middle of it. And just going around on the food tour was absolutely lovely, trying all the little classics in the area and going to the market and all of those things. So it's just a very charming town. Almost no other tourists, it feels like. I mean, there are, but it's it's very, not that many tourists at all. Like, this is not a big touristy town, um, that you would think of. Uh, so if you're looking for a little bit more off the beaten path-ish, I guessed, um, guess, Modena is a great place to, to go visit for good food and less people. What about you? I am chuckling because you said, yeah, I mean, the porticos, um, what did you say, varied in beauty? Well, some of them, some of them look kind of like dirty and gross in some areas where it's like kind of a like busy area. And I it's mean, just you like have some garbage, some and absolutely stuff. beautiful porticos, and then some that were rank, <laughs> disgusting. They were visually <laughs> offensive. No. <laughs> I never really like thought that there was like that big of like a visual spread between them, but maybe I just wasn't looking up. Um, my first impressions of Bologna was that like there were definitely more people. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, it's uh, it's reputation as a university town was was well earned. Mm-hmm. Um, there were a lot of students that was like we also s- like stayed just around the corner from the university. We did. But there hotel. were a lot of students. Yeah. Um, not saying that that's a bad thing because we um, we took advantage of the uh, university level drink uh, specials. Yeah. Bonus. If you're staying near university, both restaurants and bars are going to be super cheap with great drink specials because there's a lot of poor college, poor university students yeah. <laughs> wandering around. So I guess that's a bonus. It now, was the quality can sometimes vary when it comes to drinking. <laughs> I think I had like the strongest Negroni of my life. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I agree with that. It was all like punch you in the face. Yeah. But it was good. <laughs> um, and then first impressions of Modena was that it was very charming and very colorful. Like a lot of the like burnt oranges and burnt reds and like golden, like brownish yellows on the buildings. It was all very, very beautiful. Um, And something we learned was that there are certain colors that the buildings have to be painted. So you can't just like change the color of your building, um, which was rather interesting. Um, something, something kind of cool. Um, talk logistics, getting there, where to stay, when to go, all of the, uh, all the details. Well, I think the easiest way to get there, there is an airport if you do want to fly, but when you're in Italy, it's really easy to get around via the train. Uh, train Italia is, uh, where we booked it through and we just booked the train from Alba to Bologna and there was a changeover in Torino. Um, but it is, a direct train to a lot of other places because like to Rome and things like that, uh, because it is a bigger city. So train easy way to get there. It's also the way to get to Modena. It's a quick train ride over to Modena from, um, the Bologna train station as well. Where to stay. We stayed in another charming, adorable bed and breakfasty hotel, um, called Casa Bertigny and, or Ber, 
how do you say it? Bertani? Bertani. Bertani. Um, it was about $150 a night, so very affordable, and it was in a charming boutique hotel. It used to be a former family home, and I believe the dad was a physicist or some sort of science scientist, and he used to have a lab and a study, and there's a library, and it's absolutely stunning. I mean, home is like a loose translation. It's mostly, it's like, it's a big house. It's like a mansion, obviously, now that it's a boutique hotel. But there's a charming little garden, little courtyard area there. Um, the rooms are absolutely beautiful. They're all designed um, very differently from each other. And then there's these beautiful rooms, like libraries and things like that. So I actually got to, I ran into the owner at one point and it was his family or it's his family. And I talked to him for a little bit about the place. And he said, yeah, like at first I had just assumed that all of the, all of the pictures and paintings and all the different decor was just sort of thrifted. Like they must have went to flea markets and stuff. And he's like, nope, this is all family owned. These are pictures of family. These are all of these things. And so it was really neat. It is kind of like staying in a home and it's, it's very lovely and they're very welcoming and sweet. And they also had some good recommendations uh, for places to eat and things like that. So highly, highly recommend it. It's not too far from the university, but it is not noisy. So at night it was nice. Like it wasn't like there was crazy partying going on and you couldn't sleep. Like I felt like I slept totally fine with no noise. Um, so that's good. But a fantastic area in the city that you could walk around everywhere. Um, when to go, honestly, anytime is good. It's not a super touristy, like, I mean, yes, again, there are tourists, but it's not quite as touristy as you think. So you could really go anytime. I would say that the summer months, it gets pretty hot. So I guess for your own convenience and comfort, maybe April, May or October is a really good time to go just to kind of beat the heat and enjoy it with even fewer crowds than normal. Uh, but really you can't go wrong when you visited. We went in, I think in early June, and it was delightful. Uh, no issues at all. And no crowds. So those are the logistics of where to go, how to get there, or where to stay, how to get there, and when to go. Why don't we talk about things to do in Bologna and Modena? Yes. So we'll start with Bologna. And one of the first things that you are going to see when you are in Bologna are the Leaning Towers of Bologna. Yeah, um, skip Pisa. Yeah, get out of there. Go to Bologna. What? The Leaning Tower of Pisa. What are you doing to it? Skip it. Oh. Yeah. I thought you said skit. No. And I was like, is this like a TikTok trend? No. Skit Pisa. Um, all right. So the Leaning Towers of Bologna. This is the most famous pair of towers within the city. The tower or the city used to be full of towers and still is full of towers. Um, but this is the most famous pair. It is located at the intersection of of the roads that lead to the gates of the old city wall. Hmm. So kind of cool. Um, very old towers. We did not go up in them. Um, we just kind of like walked by and, and saw the architecture and appreciated it from the ground. We were going to go up it, um, but you had to book a ticket online. And we were like, okay, well, we'll just do it on here. But at that point, I think my phone had ran out of data and the service wasn't great for me. So we... It was just taking forever, so we just decided to admire it from the ground. Womp womp. <laughs> um, there's also the Piazza del Nettuno mm -hmm. that has the fountain of Neptune. Mm -hmm. um, there are also a ton of other piazzas that you can that you can walk around, enjoy. I mean, just walking around and appreciating the architecture is, I mean, a wonderful way to spend to spend a day. We walked mm -hmm. all over the city. Yeah. Um, we saw many a piazza. The university had gorgeous architecture. Oh, yeah. Um, so just walking around and kind of appreciating the area you're in is a, is a great way to spend the day. Um, two things that we did not do were the National Gallery and the museum. Um, we just didn't have time with, with how short we were, um, how short of time we were spending in Bologna, but there is also that option. Something we did do. This was a trip. Um, the Santuario di Madonna de San Luca. This is a church on the top of a hill. And when I say a hill, it is a never-ending incline. 
with with stairs and it is a long long takes about 45 minutes to hike up from the city walls yeah so from first the city you walls. have to get to the city edge and then it's about 45 to 60 minutes to get to um the church and it's under porticos for the most part it is under which porticos. is really nice because at least you're in the shade Yes, um, there is also a tram that will take you. Um, we had all day, so we decided to walk. Um, yeah. <laughs> it was a nice view at the top. Uh, first of all, the church was gorgeous inside. Yeah. I am a sucker for visiting churches. Mm-hmm. When we, Whenever we go to any European country, really any country, if there is an opportunity to go inside of a church, I will do it. Um, there was that. Uh, there was the beautiful cathedral in Vietnam that we went in in Hanoi. Mm-hmm. I know that we went in multiple churches in Cusco. Like I, I don't know. Do you have the same thing? Like I love going into old churches. Yeah, I mean, I think it's cool going into especially a lot of cities like with different like religion. Yes. Religious like um, yeah. stuff because I went to the. The synagogue in Budapest, and that was really cool. Very And there's neat. like a thing you can go to the like top of it too, which is pretty sweet. So it's yeah. neat because they're almost sort of like art museums on their own. Either they have art or just the architecture is so beautiful. Yes. That it's really, really cool to see. So it's And it's usually either free or very inexpensive. Yes. So it's always, it's neat. Yeah. So yeah. I, yeah, I, I love visiting churches. Um, yeah. This one was originally created in the 1100s. And finally finished in the 1700s. So you can walk around the church. That's beautiful. And then you can actually take a quite narrow and quite steep set of stairs all the way up to the top. And you have a stunning view of the city of Bologna, um, the soccer stadium. Mm -hmm. And then what was the, the countryside... And there was like a lake. I can't remember what it was. I don't remember. I mean, it was just the countryside. The surrounding the area. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, beautiful. Mm-hmm. But if you're going to walk it, it is a trek. Just prep yourself. Yeah, wear appropriate shoes. Yeah, yeah. Um, but the best thing to do in Bologna is eat. Mm-hmm. Um, and we uh, we took that to heart. We took that seriously. We took that personally. <laughs> yes. Um, Bologna is known for tortellini. It's known for bolognese, like you were saying earlier. And we had some pretty killer meals here. Before we go into Modena, let's talk about where we ate and what we had in Bologna. Yeah. So um, we got there, what was it, like 10 o'clock or so in the morning. Yes. And... We were like, all right. So as soon as it was lunchtime, we walked on over to Restaurant Terracina and started out with some tortellini. We got the buffalo mozzarella at first. Then we got some tortellini with Parmesan cream. And I got the tagliatelle or tagliatelle with ragu. So with that bolognese sauce. Everything was so good. Had a little bit of uh, house wine there too. Um, Great lunch spot. Really enjoyed it. We ate in kind of this little alley area. It was really cute. Great spot for lunch. For dinner that night... Hold oh. on. I want to give a little bit of a boost to okay. my tortellini with Parmesan cream. Okay. That was really, really good. Oh, yeah. My ragu in Tagitelli was amazing. Not an expensive restaurant. No. This was my first tortellini in Bologna, and it did not disappoint. Um, For dinner that night, we went to Osteria Brocan Doso. Are you sure you didn't sound uh, confident? It was, with that it's one. a long word. Yeah. Uh, but we ate a lot that night because we trekked all the way up to uh, San Luca. We straight and up back. feasted. And we feasted. We got we split a quiche uh, with blue cheese and pears, which was amazing. Then Christopher got the eggplant parm, and I got the ricotta, the ricotta tortellini with sage. Oh. That was that was creamy and delicious and amazing. Yeah. Totally worth it. Tortellini was great. Your eggplant parmesan was also very delicious. And then I had to order the lasagna for my main meal because when in Bologna, that's where you get some good lasagna because you've got that bolognese sauce. Oh, so good. Well, amazing. hold on. Let's let maybe clarify this. We split the quiche and blue cheese and the tortellini, right? Oh, okay. Yeah. 
Yeah. I'm trying to like remember. Oh, and you got the eggplant parm, but I got the lasagna. You got the lasagna. So I got the eggplant parm. Both were good. Mine was better. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, Yours was good. Mine was really good. Okay. And then we also, of course, finished it off with some tiramisu. I can never get enough tiramisu. I know you can. I could eat that every day. You could? Yes. It I love tiramisu. And of yeah. course, we were washing all of this down with, with Lombrusco. Lombrusco. Yeah. Yeah. Very, very delicious. Um, and then our second day in Bologna, uh, well, we spent most of the day in Modena, which Chris will talk about in a little bit. But um, for that evening, we grabbed some cocktails near the university at Lab 16, which is crazy because it's this whole outdoor thing. It's literally just like a little pop-up in front of a bar, tr- bar truck, you know, instead yes. of a food truck, it's a little bar truck. All these tables are set out. And Dozens of tables. Right in front of a beautiful church in this small little piazza. It's gorgeous. So beautiful. We walked past it and we're like, well, this is an iconic setting for a drink. So let's go here. Uh, very cheap d- drinks because, well, we're near the university. Um, and I got an April spritz, of course. And you got... I got two Negroni. Negronis. You got two Negronis. And we they gave us some potato chips with it, which was nice. Um yeah, I mean, they were strong. They weren't the best cocktails we've had of the trip. That was in Rome. Um, but they were they were good. It was I think you go more for the location. Like it's very it's a beautiful little piazza area to sit and drink and have some potato chips. Um, and it's very strong. <laughs> very strong. Yeah, so pace yourself. And then for dinner that night we wandered over to Vicolo Colombina. One of the best meals I have ever had. Yes. Oh my goodness, it was so good. It's in like a little tucked away street near like the main piazza. I had, this is where I tried a signature dish of the area, tortellini and broth. And I was nervous to get this at first because I thought, oh, there's no way, like, that just seems so simple. Oh my gosh, it was simple, but very delicious. Like, so amazing. I love soup too, so. Simple in, like, the ingredients. Yes. It's right? not, like, a lot of stuff. It's not overly complicated, but it was very, very, very delicious. Um, you got some spaghetti while you're there very good Mm -hmm. um a fresh tomato sauce some basil um perfectly cooked pasta that is one thing that i really really appreciated about this trip Mm -hmm. is that um it has completely changed the way that we cook pasta since we have arrived home would you agree with that i I don't know. I think we've also just upgraded our like pasta game too, though. Like, like we don't just, I don't know. I think we're more persnickety about the type of pasta we buy. I think that's right. But I also think that we are not afraid to like maybe undercook it by a minute, knowing that it will finish and still have a very firm texture as opposed to like cooking it on the high end of what it says. And then maybe having it be a little bit more mushy. I, I think we've like Okay. I think it's a sturdier nude. Okay. Sturdier noodle. Okay. Um, but anyway, it was very good. Um, I think the main meal for me, the cockerel with truffle. So, so freaking good. I think it was over mashed potatoes. It was. It was so, it was cockerel over which is a, a bed type of, of chicken. It is. Um, over a bed of mashed potatoes with with like a truffle sauce. It was so good. Oh my gosh. It was amazing. Like that was one of the best meals. Before we went to Rome and ate in Rome. Yeah. And guys, we we don't just like wander into restaurants. Like when we go, especially for Italy, we we do our research ahead of time because we love we love food and we know um, you can't just wander into restaurants and touristy areas because sometimes you're not going to get as great of food because you're in these touristy restaurants. But if you do some research, you can find some really great stuff. So I'm very happy that we landed on Vicolo Colombina absolutely amazing food that tortellini and blo- broth really hit the spot that cockerel with truffle what did we have for dessert because didn't well, we have like a strawberry like thing for dessert we did but i also had another eggplant dish here yes that was incredible i love eggplant yeah um and it was in season while we were there so we had we had fantastic eggplant for dessert I didn't write it down in my notes because I think we just like a spur of the moment. We're like, yeah, we'll buy that. You're like, we'll get dessert. It was some sort of chocolatey, ice creamy thing, maybe. Maybe strawberry. It was a, it was a chocolate uh, strawberry dish. Yeah. Very good. Regardless, everything there was amazing. Uh, very delicious. We had some Nebbiolo with it because Christopher loves Nebbiolo. Um, 
but it was a fantastic meal. We were there for a long time, just enjoying sitting outside and all of that stuff. So highly, highly recommend Vicolo Colombino. Yes. Um, and that's where we ate and drank in Bologna. Yeah. Do you want to talk about Modena now? Yes. So okay. things to do in Modena. Um, the Modena Cathedral, the Torre Ghirlandina, which is the bell tower right next to the Modena Cathedral, as well as um, it's all located on the Piazza Grande. And the Piazza Grande also has the Prado Ringadora. So I'll, I'll kind of walk through all of those. Um, the Modena Cathedral, we spent maybe 20 minutes mm -hmm. um, walking around, looking inside, um, kind of learning a little bit about that. Um, saw the bell tower outside, and we actually spent quite a bit of time in Piazza Grande just because that's where our food tour met. Um, and it met near the Prado Ringadora. Prado Ringadora is, um, I mean, you would, you would look at it and you would be like, that's just like a big stone slab. Um, but it has incredible historical significance to Modena. Um, the town criers used to use it as, um, as a platform. Um, it, it, was, it was a bit of a pulpit. They would use it for executions. Um, it really was just kind of like an elevated platform where, um, I mean, if you, if you need a whole bunch of people to see something or to hear something, use that and let them hear or see it. Um, yeah, kind of a kind of a neat area um, in Modena. You had mentioned that um, Italian sports cars are prevalent in this area. The Ferrari Museum, as well as the Ferrari Park, um, are are things to do in Modena. We did not do either of those um, because we went to Modena for a very specific reason that I will talk about at the end. Um, there is also the Modena Public Gardens, as well as the Albanelli Market. Really, really neat market. Um, there was you. You could tell that there was a lot of history there. Um, they they even had some of the old, um, like fish cleaning stations, that you would um, like some of the fishmongers would come in and that like still like the sinks and everything were there. It was it was neat because you could see like the you you could you could see stuff that was part of the market um, functional years ago, um, still there so that it allowed you to picture the history. Um, very, very neat market. We went to Modena for one reason, and that was to um, eat again. <laughs> so we worked with Taste Bologna Food Tour in Modena, and we tasted some incredible balsamic fulfilling a life dream of yours it was um, amazing we had a balsamic tasting we learned all about the traditional preparation methods of balsamic tried a bunch of different types tried a bunch of different Bought types a bottle to take home yes <laughs> um we learned about the different types of parmigiano reggiano we had some wonderful noco frito some um lambrusco some um, cappuccino the, and the, espresso. The jelly, which is kind of like these flattened pieces of like bread with usually meats or things in, in it. Um, we had those little sandwiches. Yeah. Very delicious. Some cakes at a bakery. Yeah. We're not going to drop all the details or the yeah. locations because we recommend that you do Taste Bologna Food Tour. It was um, great. It was great. Lots it of was great food and tasting. Maybe a half day. Yeah, I think we got there. It was like ten o'clock to maybe one in the afternoon. Yeah, so, so a good. nice, um, a nice morning to like through lunch, sort of. Um, yeah, sort of food like that's tour. Your lunch is is the food tour. Exactly, well worth it. Um, very good. And then after the food tour, we hopped on the uh, train back to Bologna, and that is when we went to Vicolo Colombina after the incredibly strong cocktails um, in front of a church. Well, and we also made our own little aperitivo just with a bunch of products from the region. Well, we also had um, a couple things that we had purchased in Piedmont, including some nougat that we still had, hazelnut nougat. And um, we had some leftover like candies or whatever. And I was like, you know what? Let's go into the supermarket and purchase some Parmesan, purchase a little mortadella. And then, well, and we got some bread and stuff and, and some Lombrusco and made our own little like aperitivo in the late afternoon before getting 
drinks. Please don't judge us. We were on vacation before grabbing drinks at Lab 16 and then also having wine at dinner. Um, It was a great day. We slept great that night. We did. We were also in bed at like 9.30 or 10. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. It was a it was a nice um, it was a nice day. It was fun. With all that being said, what was your best meal? The best thing you ate? Vicolo Colombina. For sure. The cockerel and the tortellini and Blaroth is mine. Yeah. yeah. Um, the cockerel was the dish that you ordered. And mm-hmm. that traditionally, like when we get stuff, you we'll try always, each other's. Yeah, we'll always yeah. try each other's. I tried yours and I was like, oh man, that yeah. is the best thing that I have had on this trip. It was good. Yeah. Until Rome. Until Rome. Um, that yeah. was killer though. Like that dish alone is something that I still think about. It was really good. I really enjoyed it. Was that your favorite as well? Mm-hmm. I also really enjoyed the whole food tour. I think another highlight for me was the balsamic. Yeah. So good. Not really a meal, but very delicious. I'm very glad that we ended up purchasing a bottle. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, all that being said, would you go back to Bologna and or Modena? Um, I feel like we saw a lot of Bologna. I fell in love with Modena. I would definitely go back to Modena just because I I think it would be really neat to go there and also try the Massimo Baturi, his his restaurant. Sure. Um, yeah, and maybe do like a Parmesan factory tour or a balsamic vinegar like tour or something specific to that. I think that would be neat to do in Modena. Um, I don't necessarily need to go back to Bologna. I think it was it was absolutely lovely, but I feel like we saw a lot of it in the time that we were there or the main things to see. That cockerel isn't... Uh... I mean, I well, I guess I could take a day trip if we were in Modena. But I think next time I would stay in Modena because it was just an endlessly charming town. Yeah. And there's fair. definitely more things I want to see and do in Modena specifically. So yes to Modena, no to Bologna. Yeah. What about you? Yeah. Um, I'm I'm pretty similar. I actually said no to both. Oh. Um, we had a very nice visit in both places. Um. We had some of the best food that we have ever had, but there's not necessarily enough there to warrant a second visit for me because like with the, like I was thinking about like the Parmigiano Reggiano too, right? But like we could go to Parma for that. Um, so especially with everything else in Italy, I mean, you have, you have Venice, you have Puglia, you have, um, Cinque Terre, Amalfi Coast, Florence. I mean, Na- um, Naples, everything else in Italy, I'm thinking, like, do I really want to go back to Bologna and Modena? And I don't, like I said, I just don't think that there's enough where it would be a different sort of experience. Like, there's not that one thing in either of them for me that I'm like, man, that is at the top of my list for the next time I'm going. Um, So I would say no to going back, but that's not because I didn't have a good time. It's just one of those destinations where I think I got a really good feel for both areas, um, despite the short amount of time. And I don't necessarily have anything where I'm like longing to to return. Um, there isn't that one thing that I didn't get to do. That's fair. Um, yeah, I mean, they're both lovely. Um, but yeah, I think, uh, I think we came, we ate, we conquered, you know, <laughs> but would you recommend this for first timers to Italy? Cause this was your first time going. This was my third time to Italy. Yeah. Um, and I would, so I'm a big tortellini fan. Okay. I mean that alone, I think that this had, th- this was really the time to eat on this trip. Yes. I mean, if you guys are big foodies or whatever this is such a food centric part of italy yes that it's a fantastic place to go visit if that's your goal for your first time now if you're trying to do beaches maybe don't go to bologna uh but if you if you're there for food and you want to eat some really really delicious food um there's options to do parmesan tours and balsamic tours and yes you know if you're big into race cars or cars just fast cars too um great region for that not slow cars not slow cars um but yeah, I think I highly recommend it for first timers. I agree. I yeah. thought that it was a nice, um, it was a nice kind of portion of the trip where it wasn't 
like gift shop after gift shop after like a lot of things aimed at tourists. If that That's makes very sense. true. There I really didn't recall seeing a lot of those. Like, I didn't shops, either. Which, especially in Modena. Right. Which I mean is in stark contrast to Rome, obviously. Um, Even Milan too. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But you could tell that it was, it was not that type of uh, location, neither Bologna nor Modena. So I would absolutely recommend going. Um, but just know that a few days is probably sufficient. Yeah. Um, highly recommend it. Honestly, like I think that if I had done this trip my first time around, I think I would have had a better first impression of Italy versus me doing all the touristy things in the touristy areas. Um, but yeah, highly recommend it. That is our two days in Bologna and Modena. Let us know your thoughts. Have you guys been? Are you hoping to go? You can always reach us on Twitter, WW Honeymoon, Instagram at Worldwide Honeymoon, or email cat at WorldwideHoneymoon.com. But thank you guys so much for tuning in. Thanks, guys. Thanks for tuning in, and don't forget to rate and review our podcast. It takes less than a few minutes and really helps other people find us. Also, if you're enjoying this awesome free information on both the blog and podcast, when you're booking your next trip, head over to WorldWideHoneymoon.com slash resources and use the links provided. We earn a small commission at no cost to you when you book through these links, and these are all brands and companies we know, love, and use, like Skyscanner for finding the best flight prices, World Nomads for the best travel insurance, TripAdvisor for hotel bookings and reviews, and even Amazon for all of your travel purchases. Thank you for tuning in. We really appreciate it. Wherever you are, wherever you go, remember to make every day a worldwide honeymoon.